<laughs> it's your boy Lizzo, man. We in the building session podcast. I'm here with a special guest today. We got Dee Dee Davis in the building. <laughs> Hey, y'all, see this shit? Thank you, y'all, you hooked up, bro. I got the whole button. Y'all feel like Kanye in this bitch. <laughs> Didi, how you feeling today? I'm good. I'm excited to be here. Good. Excited to be here? Yeah. What's going on, man? So, the Session Podcast, you know, we sit down, we talk that shit, man. Um, first things we start off, though, is uh, where you from, man? What's up a little about you? Well, I'm from out here. Yeah. I'm from Chicago. Um, I was born in suburbs, but I was kind of raised in L.A. Like, my whole life, hmm. always lived back and forth, and then... Moved back out here to go to high school. Been a little bit of everywhere, but I just decided to come back home. Where'd you go to high school? I went to Red Central in Ridge Olympia Central? Fields. Are oh, you a real suburb kid? <laughs> You're a suburban kid. Yeah, I was born in St. James and everything. Oh, wow. Okay. Some funny stuff. I was born in St. James, low key. <laughs> don't tell nobody else, though. Yeah, don't nobody know that. <laughs> Olympia Fields, baby, type shit. Don't nobody don't just let that ride. But, uh, yeah, man, that's nice. So, how did you get out to L.A.? Like, what was the start of that? Like, how did you get from um, Chicago to L.A.? Like, used, were you born in L.A. or were you born here? No, I was born. I was born in Olympia Fields. Right. And, okay. like, my family's from here. My uh-huh. mom's from out here. My whole family from out here. And um, when I was, like, four years old, I have an older sister. Me and her started modeling. And we was, like, doing competitions type shit and we would win and like go to like competitions things like that and we went to a scouting mm-hmm. um and my sister got picked up so my oh, sister word. actually started acting before me and she was in an episode of the power rangers oh word. she wasn't a power ranger because everyone be like damn she was a power ranger right, no right, she right. was a little girl that got saved by the power rangers oh, it's still nice still cold as right. anyway um apparently i was like four years old and i told my mom like i want to act too i want to be like my sister mm-hmm. and it just kind of went from there. They started putting me in stuff. Um, I did Huggies when I was young. I did some stuff for like, you remember that store, Carson's? Carson's? Yeah, 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 like, yeah, yeah. I did okay. some um, like photos. Oh, word. my mom like, stayed in Carson's <laughs> Okay. I did some like um, print stuff, a lot of that. And then um, I got the audition for the Bernie Mac show. Really? And that was kind of wild because, like, even to this day, I remember, like, my mom teaching me the lines. Mm-hmm. Like, she was in the bathroom and she was like, the scene that we had to, like, audition for for the Bernie Mac show was the episode when he needed the toilet paper. Mm-hmm. And um, he, and he, I was like, it didn't go ding, the ding. The time, your timer. Yeah, the yeah, timer, we were just right? watching that. And then my mom was playing him and she was like, ding, ding, baby girl, ding, ding. Well, and um, I got that and just kind of went from there. Really? So how was that, like, as a... I guess as a kid, I mean, maybe you were really young, but did it feel exciting at the time? Like, no, like a big deal. No, didn't know what the hell was going on. Like my mom and my dad, like when I got it, they were like, oh, my God, jumping up and down. I remember being excited. Like, OK, yeah. we we happy. Um, I didn't really understand the concept mm-hmm. of like being on a show. Mm-hmm. I understood that my mom was like helping me with lines and I was meeting these people like our first um what was it? Uh, table read. Mm-hmm. It was all of us. And my mom was telling me, like, you, you have to call him Uncle Bernie mm-hmm. and Aunt Wanda. And I was like, is this my uncle? Oh. Or like, or is this my auntie? So like, like <laughs> I, just, confusion. I right. didn't really understand. But um, I think it got more exciting as I got older and understood. Like, Mm -hmm. I really, when I was a kid, I really didn't understand I was on a TV show. Mm -hmm. Literally, we would be in the mall and people would come up to me and I would ask my mom, like, how do these people, like, Mm -hmm. what's happening? Or, like, somebody asked me, like, how did you feel being on a show that millions of people watch? And I was like, I don't think it's that much. Mm -hmm. And they were like, what? (laughs) Because you were, you were, I don't know. I was a kid. Like, I just, I didn't realize the significance of what I was doing at that time. Mm -hmm. Dang. So, like, okay, when you're a kid like that, and you know you're going through the motions do do you get help from like the stars like of the show like bernie max and like do they help you through these scenes if you have hard times or things like that definitely or, yeah definitely a lot of um bernie did a lot of improv within mm. the show like there was a scene when me and uh jeremy were fighting over a car and I hit him and I was like, punk. He told me to say that. But I was like, that wasn't in the script. He, uh, I was like, I didn't want to say it because I thought it was a bad word or whatever. But mm-hmm. he was like, no, I'll say it. Like, he really pushed me out of my comfort zone. He really, <clears throat> excuse me, he really taught me a lot of different things and a lot of different lessons that, like, you know, I still even use to this day. Mm. 
So before you even going into that, mm-hmm. just you as a kid star technically because i mean like you said you're in millions of people's homes every you know whatever that's night on weird TV. to even think about it, it is though that's what i want but that's what i want to kind of dive into like is like how as a kid you know does your life necessarily change from like i mean obviously you have to work because you're on on a set but does your life change from like what you, i guess i'd say a normal kid who who isn't a superstar life would be like Like, how's playing outside for you? Like, that's what I really want to know. Yeah, so, like, completely. I had a childhood, Mm -hmm. but it wasn't really a childhood. Okay. Like, I had to go to award shows, Mm -hmm. after parties, award ceremonies, autograph signings, charity events, all this all this stuff. Right. I didn't have a regular childhood. Like I went to kindergarten and I've been homeschooled. I was homeschooled all the way up into my sophomore year in high school. Mm. I really? literally had, I felt like I had no social skills. I didn't really, I would make friends with like the kids that was on the background, mm-hmm. like of the episodes. Right. Like that would be, I'm, I was like four years old around adults all day. Mm-hmm. Like nice to meet you. I'm Dee Dee Davis at four years old. Like right. I felt like I became an adult faster than Very I was well a kid. Very well spoken and whatnot. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I had to be, I mm-hmm. had to be up and nice to meet you. And th- you're about to meet the CEO of Fox or some shit. Oh, nice to meet you. Was it was it hard for you, like <laughs> to like have yes. to like be up early, be on yes. a schedule all the time? I like, would be like, crying. I'm yeah. a kid. I would be crying. Like, mommy, I don't want. Mm-hmm. <laughs> My mom would be like, just get through. I remember this one time. Um, after the show would get picked up every year, we would have to go to New York to do press and like all the Fox shows would go out there. And we used to have to be at these like events and parties all night with these people that were just like coming and taking a picture. And I remember like I, it, <laughs> the people that were coming and taking the pictures, I was crying. Like I was mm-hmm. like, trying to smile. Like but I was so tired. It was a lot of early mornings. It was a lot of press. It was a lot of being trained to do interviews and elaborate and that that's a really big thing like if you know my mom she taught us like in interviews if we seen her do this that means elaborate talk mm. more keep going keep going like i was trained to do this at a young age so i don't really feel like i had a childhood so it sounds like moms was like <clears throat> the director of a lot of a lot of the acting oh, no. and like my, helping you through my mom was completely in control i would definitely yeah. say like without my mom we definitely one of went as far as we did or yeah. wouldn't have been in that situation at all. Like it was completely because of my mom that we were on the show. My mom was like the, the supervisor, the manager, yeah. the assistant. She was everything. Mm-hmm. The, the trainer, when we would go over lines, like she, she did that shit. But like I bet you, she pushed you through it knowing that like now you'd have the understanding of like <clears throat> once in a lifetime opportunity. Yeah. Like, you know, you I definitely feel like I took it for granted back then mm. because when I, you know, I, I was raised in it. Yeah. So I didn't understand the struggles outside of the life we had or yeah. like, you know, stuff that people really go through. And so Bills like, and I'm, shit. yeah, you know, <laughs> right. Like real, real life. Shit. Wait, what about that? <laughs> <laughs> so, um, yeah, no, definitely like shit yeah yeah damn you lost me when you pressed the goddamn thing i laughed but i was sitting here like shit no no but you were saying that you just you know you at the time you didn't understand really like what other people really went through and some of the hardships i was i will i will definitely say i was so me and my sister like we homeschooled all Mm -hmm. our lives had a couple of friends not really like we didn't really have a big social life so i feel like we were so sheltered to the outside world Mm -hmm. that when we decided to get out of acting which everyone like Kind of throw shade to be like, oh, you failed in acting. No, I I quit. I didn't yeah. want to do it anymore. I wanted to have a regular life. I was tired of it. And uh, real life hit us like quick. Yeah. Quick, like experiences with friends, people, like shit out. We were just in a bubble for so long that mm-hmm. I feel like life hit us pretty hard coming out of it so do you any do you i mean i wouldn't say any regrets but like do you ever look back at it like you probably should have just kept going Mm, that's a good question no i don't because Mm -hmm. i feel that i'm glad i stopped because me stopping made me the person who i am today Mm -hmm. you know like 
I'm this sounds cocky, but I'm very humble. Mm-hmm. Oh, <laughs> but like, you know, I'm very down to earth and um I don't feel like if I would have stayed in that setting yeah. that I would be the person I am today and I love the person I am. Yeah. So because being on TV in front of millions is like not normal. And a lot of people so could have that go to their head. Yeah. I mean, I understand. I don't even like millions. That's wild. Nah, but so let me ask you then, <clears throat> when you did come home to go to school, high school, what was the, what was that transition? Like describe like. That you was know, fucking hell. I yeah. was so fucking scared. Like I have anxiety. I'm a nerd. I was like always a nervous person. Mm-hmm. Like I'm stupid as hell. Like when you know me, but like outside of people not knowing me, like this was the, like the only time I was around like people my age. Yeah. And like a lot I was of them at so, that with a bunch of different personalities. I was so yeah. scared. I was so scared. And um, I remember my first day. My first day, my dad made me go to school on a Friday. I still think that was the dumbest shit he ever yeah, did. Yeah, could have waited till Monday. <laughs> I was like, why? Shut up, gang. <laughs> anyways, like, damn, pop you on that. Like, why I go to school on a Friday? So, anyways, I went to school Monday, and then like third period, this dude named Jalen was like, "You look like the girl from the Bernie Mac show." And like my honest ass, it's like, yeah. I am. Oh shit! And he was like, I "Swear to God!" And I was like, "I said, why would I lie?" And he was like, "You're lying." And I was like, "If I was lying, why the fuck would I choose to be her?" Like, <laughs> right? Out of all the people, out of all the people I could choose to yeah. be, no. Like, I was like, "No, it's, it's me. I'm I'm myself." And he was like, "For real?" And I was like, "Yeah." So I remember, like, at the end of eighth period, it was like a Clout. swarm Just of riz. people around <laughs> my locker, and I yeah. had a locker partner. Her name um was one of my friends. Her name CJ. And people like, <laughs> I, I knew this dude named Jakari and he was like, we're going to be your security guard. He, he was like pushing people like, get the fuck back, get mm, the fuck back. And I was wild? like so nervous because everybody was like, oh my God, oh my, it spread it through the school, I guess. Yeah. And I remember a whole bunch of people was by our locker and then my friend CJ took me to the bus and she was like, why the hell was everyone just at our locker like that? And then I had to explain like, oh. I was on the show. Damn. So Everybody like, found out. You left TV and still live life like a TV show, realistically. Yeah, no. Like, I was really scared of high school because I I thought it was like TV. Yeah. Like, I used to avoid lunch because I was like, oh, fuck. Who am I going to sit with? Yeah. I was, like, really nervous. No, high school gives it. a lot of people that type of anxiety. Like, everybody, when you're in high school, I feel like in that age, you everybody already has trouble trying to fit in anyway. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, some people better than others, but... And then, like, getting dropped off into, like, real world for like, being homeschooled. it home was school. literally, Listen. like, my sophomore year, my yeah. dad just was like, all right. <laughs> yeah. Just like, for real? Like, you can't ease me into this? No, it, I was so scared, but. Did you want to go? Did you want to go to high school? I, yeah. Okay. I wanted the experience of going to school because yeah. I'd just never been to school. And I just It was irritating that, like, I had a couple of friends, but mm-hmm. they would have, like, a lot of friends that they know knew from like the first grade second grade i don't have that i don't i don't know nobody from them grades so so in your like childhood days did you ever have like a real child birthday party oh yeah yeah but they wasn't regular birthday parties that's what i'm saying so like (laughs) what were your birthday parties like Um, because you're you're a kid star like what are your birthday parties um, like like my kid, like, we're doing a fucking, I don't know, some tablecloth and hats and shit. My eighth birthday party was at a <coughs> club called Black Pearl wow. in Los Angeles. It was off of Melrose. And we had, like, over 250 people there. And we had, like, a stretch limo. Um, That's I amazing, had performers. Man. We knew a lot of celebrity kids, so they was there. My mm. cousin was there. <laughs> they was performers. We had the, you remember them green screen things where you yeah. put your head in it? Yeah, I know what you And mean. it would be, like, dancing and stuff. We mm. had there. I had a special drink like my eighth ninth and tenth biggest birthday parties that but that was when i was on the show like Mm. we used to like rent out places and have a i used to have crump dancers at all my birthday parties for i don't know what reason i used to you like crump i but that was a shit then probably i think how old were you remember that episode when i crumped in the burning match if anyone yeah like that was a big thing (coughs) crumping was like my shit so the reason this is so special (laughs) to me is because um, I think me and my fiance binge watched Bernie Mac really through her entire pregnancy. <laughs> oh, and my daughter is like that when she started watching TV. Mm-hmm. The only thing at first, before we were like Gracie's Corner and stuff like that, <laughs> uh, it was only the Bernie Mac show. She That's- would only sit there. She was probably three, four months old when she first started like looking at the TV and like 
watching it and oh it, was no, it was only the bernie mac show so it was just like damn you like this too and like my parents watch it like my i can like my mom used to literally say to us like i'm mm-hmm. gonna beat your ass to the white meat show <laughs> and like right. i never know at the time where it came from until like i got older and really started watching the bernie mac show and then yeah. i hear him saying that and shit and i'm like damn bro like bro was <laughs> everywhere like um, For real. you know what i'm saying so this show this was very important to me like and when Aww. i did some research on the show and i'm like damn she's from chicago like that's dope I'm like, yo, Frankie, we got to see if she where she at, bro. <laughs> we got to figure out if we can get her in, dog. Like, yeah, so that's very special to me. Um, I appreciate it. Yeah, no problem. I appreciate it being here. Yeah, it's still It's amazing. Glad you came through. And we don't have many women come through the session podcast with that. So I think we had like maybe a couple. <laughs> so this is great. Like, I love having women on the podcast to talk and share their thoughts, especially someone with some with a voice, you know, that's been in yeah. people's homes, you know, made like actual memories for people like me for real. That's so wild. Yeah, like, it's actually crazy. Like it's actually low key kind of crazy looking at you. Like, <laughs> like I'm not gonna be in front. Like I'm trying to keep. Like you see me doing shit like this. Like Frankie, I don't even do shit like this, gang. <laughs> but it's like it's dope because we sit and watch the shit, and it's like a lot of the lessons from the show is mm-hmm. like amazing. Um, so going forward though, like how is life now? Like life what's life good. like now? What's new in life? You know, post stardom when you quit acting you know out of high school what's what's adulthood and stuff like for you um well i'm a mommy of two great amazing um currently in a relationship two boys two girls i have a boy logan he's five and i have a daughter named leah oh man that's is about to be two in april is that it did you get your (laughs) i'm straight yeah i bet right that's amazing I'm an overshare. I, that was a two C sections. I'm finito. We're <laughs> done over that. here. <laughs> yeah, I'm good. But no, uh, I'm a mommy right now, and that's the best thing. Like mm-hmm. I love being a mom, and I I don't know. I just fucking love my kids. Like they're the best things ever. Yeah, they get on my nerves, but I love them. <laughs> Are you um like stay at home mom? Do you take care of the kids, or do you currently work now? Um, I work and stay home. Mm-hmm. So I'm still an entrepreneur because there's a lot of different things that I want to do. Yeah, yeah. And um, I think it was hard for me to find what I wanted to do after mm-hmm. a while. Like after high school, I wanted to go back into acting. But like I also got comfortable in like my friends and my family yeah. and everything. And I just <clears throat> wanted to stay out here, honestly. And I don't know. I felt like. I was not forced to act Mm. because I wanted to do it, but I also felt like I was still at a young age where I didn't necessarily make all of my own decisions that I was also being told. It's 100% impossible. You know, this, like, you know, know, I'm not making my own decisions right here. So I felt like I was, I was raised to act. Yeah. And I didn't feel like at one point I didn't know if acting was my passion. And so I went through a phase of like, my whole life, I've been trained to do one thing. Oh, yeah. That's and like now, where am I well, with it? The thing you is know? that the world in general just has so much shit to offer. Mm-hmm. That, that realistically, act even though great acting is so great, yeah. with it, what it is, is that that's such a small part as to what this world has to act, act, offer rather, realistically. Mm-hmm. Like you can go be great in something else. Yeah. Like, you get what I'm saying? So I'm very talented. That's what I'm saying. So that's not <laughs> that's not un- unreasonable to think. You know what I'm saying? Um, but being a mommy of two, how's motherhood? Talk to me a little bit about motherhood. How's that experience for you? Um, it's the best. Like, there's a lot of things I would take back, but I would never take back, like, my kids. Like, that's the best. I would honestly say that's the best decision I've had because I would say with my son – I was a little young. I was like pregnant at 20, had him by 21. I was pregnant on my 21st birthday. First off, I was blue right there, but I was like, my son made me get my shit together because I felt like I was just a little bit of everywhere Mm -hmm. at that time. And my son helped me through some shit. Like he helped me. Come on. Yeah. Like I got to be in a locked in. Yeah, for real. Like once I had him. My daughter's one years old. So I had a portion where I was just like, I was locked in. Like yeah. I can just remember, like my days felt like just mushed together because mm-hmm. I was just so locked in. Like I couldn't miss a beat on anything. So yeah, yeah. And is it great? Like, is it like an uplifting thing to just you know see your kids grow? And is that like what you just want to do for a while? No, I mm. want to. I want. Well, kinda. I want to do both. Like I still. Pl- I'm still doing stuff. Mm. Like I'm still 
I'm trying to kind of honestly, I'm trying to get myself back into it, but I'm getting myself back into it when comfortably, yeah. like comfortably, like, place. you know, I'm not going to just throw myself. I'm doing it the way I want to do it. Yeah. And I do want to get back out there, but I'm taking my time with it because I have my kids and I'm not in a rush to do it either. So it's like my main priority is my kids. My son's going to school like. We got homework to do once I get home, like, (laughs) to be honest. (laughs) But, like, I'm I'm, I'm invested into them Mm -hmm. right now. So when I feel like I can ease up and then invest a little more in myself, then I will. Mm -hmm. But, yeah, like, that's all I'm worried about right now. Well, it's good to hear. I think it's good for a lot of women to hear because I know that, you know, having kids do bring different things, man. Sometimes they can bring, like, you know, I don't call them trouble, but Mm -hmm. obstacles. Um, and, and it's just good for other women to be able to hear other women's situations through motherhood. Motherhood's a really great thing. Yeah, like, it y'all can made be. a person. G. It can be. <laughs> yeah, it's, a, it's dope. It's a struggle, though. Yeah, it, it is. is a struggle. Work. Like, every day, I'm not going to lie. Yeah. It's a struggle. Like, you have your points. Like, but they make it worth it in the end, so. Yeah. That's great to hear. So, now let's dive a little into it. What was it like, uh... I just kind of want to know, like, what was your preparation like, you know, for being on set? And uh, you're a kid, um, you know, you gotta, you gotta shoot. What was your schedule like during shooting? Mm-hmm. I want to say like call time be seven thirty, eight a.m. It was like it was like the it was literally like I was going to school. Same mm-hmm. work, same schedule, like as if I was in school. Yeah. So call time seven thirty, eight a.m. Um, we get to the set go into the dressing room i would get they would have like my clothes in my um dressing room get dressed go downstairs i would go to hair and makeup if they if i wasn't in like the first two scenes then they would send me up to uh, my teacher we all had our own teachers on set i had a (coughs) teacher named susan she's the best i love her but um i would go to my teacher and then when they needed me they would send um send somebody up to come get me we would go ahead and do some of our scenes I I can only since I was a kid I can only be on set for so so much time so many mm. hours so I really feel like by three o'clock like child three o'clock laws type shit no for real yeah exactly yeah so like I couldn't I couldn't work over a certain time mm. I remember sometimes like I would still be on set and they had to use a stand in for me but I was like I'm right here why can't y'all use me and they were like my mom was like no you can't uh, do it because over time over time so you had a look alike. Mm-hmm. Holy shit! There was one episode. I'm so mad because she turned Wait around. She wasn't supposed to turn around. <laughs> and they kept it. Yeah, they kept it. Which episode is this? I don't now know I what epi- it was. I don't know what episode Did it was. She look like we you were at all? all. We were on his. I was on his leg. Jeremy was on his leg, and I think Camille was on his back. Okay. And he was walking down the hallway, mm. and um, the little girl was supposed to be turned like this. But when he was walking down the hallway, she turned. And we seen her face like in the episode, and I was oh, like, "Oh shit, that is not me." I don't know what episode it is. I'll find it. Now I'm gonna, I'm gonna find <laughs> it tonight. <laughs> tonight, <laughs> I'm gonna find it. What was working with uh, Jordan like? Because he's a character on the show. You know what's crazy, and a lot of people don't know it. We mm. legit did not like each other on the show. Swear to God, everyone. It's swear to God, like Why? our legit relationship was just like on the show. What? Did not like each other. Like he was mean to me. He was a little jerk oh, a little boy, as though. a kid. Like yeah. he was a little boy, and I was a little girl. The our first interaction it wasn't our first interaction, but it was the interaction that scarred me to the point I remember it. Like mm-hmm. right now, we were doing the church episode, right? Mm-hmm. And I remember I was looking for my mom. She was in the dressing room or something, and I asked him, like, "Have you seen my mom?" And I swear to God, this man looked me in my face and was like, "Your mom? She took your sister and went back to Chicago, and she never wants to see you again." I'm four. I broke down. Like I'm was crying. Was he playing or was he just being malicious? Being an ass. I don't. <laughs> I don't. I don't know. I don't know what made him say that. I yeah. never did nothing. Him. I'm four. Holy shit. And I remember I was crying, so I found my mom, and I was like, "Why would you say that?" Like, <laughs> holy fuck. I was like, Jesus. you know. So after that, he like that. That day, episode it just, like, where it he was, was just, trying to be tough, too serious. No, it was just funny because like I didn't realize like anytime we used to have like an episode where we would fight, they would be like, "Hey, you gotta fight an episode today." And we'd be like, "Oh yeah, oh, okay, wow. finally, <laughs> we gotta fight an uh-huh. episode." Or like he would just pick with me, but he was really like, I never had a brother, but like mm. he would be 
he's like the closest, one of the closest things. So like, yeah. Yeah, I guess when you think about it all, all the siblings. I don't. Are just I didn't really, realize they were irritating. Yeah. Or like would pick with me, but he used to all the yeah. time. But it's funny because we're close now. Mm-hmm. Like that's my nigga now. Like yeah, I was mean to my little brother for sure. Like it's we it's, fought all the time. It's funny that we're close because I used mm-hmm. I just be looking at him like. That's crazy. I couldn't stand your ass as like a child. Do you talk to everyone from the show? I talk to two mm. of them. I talk to my siblings of the show. Yeah. I'm cool with them. I fuck with them. Yeah. I love them. Like I defend them. Yeah. Anytime. We don't talk every day. Of course. We don't no. talk all the time, but it's like, you know, it's love. You still got the Happy connection. birthday. You good? You yeah. straight? You know, stuff like that. But For sure. No, those are always going to be like my yeah, honorary you can siblings. call them, they'll answer for sure. Oh, yeah. No, yeah. definitely. That's dope. What was it like working with Bernie Mac? I don't know. It was weird because people would ask me that all the time. And I, I would be like, I didn't understand he was famous as a kid. Mm-hmm. So like when people ask me, like, what is it like? And I'd be it's fine. I'm sure he <laughs> didn't make it seem like as if like, oh, I'm no, famous. he didn't. Like, he he understood you were a little kid. Yeah. Like. Yeah. I legit like will call him Uncle Bernie mm-hmm. off off the show, like for real, like on set, call him Uncle Bernie. He was literally like a father figure to me, mm-hmm. like legit, like an uncle. Like he taught me how to snap my fingers. Mm-hmm. Um, episode where I learned how to tie my shoes, he really taught me how to tie my shoes. Episode where I learned how to ride bike, I had to learn how to ride a bike for oh, that wow. episode. So it's like a lot of different things that I learned on the show. I actually learned in real life, and he was like front and center of me learning all these different things mm. so he really played a big role in my life but i just never looked at him as like a superstar no not yeah. at all well Until if you I really got, didn't like, even get like for the for most part understand about the show but you gotta understand too yeah. like the things that he was famous for i wasn't watching at five and six years old my parents wasn't yeah. letting me watch that so like when i got so older you didn't even watch your did you watch your own shows not a kid? really like, as a kid, I didn't really watch the episode because I was just kind of like, I know what happens. <laughs> mm. <laughs> or, like, or, like, even still, if I watch an episode, I could tell you, like, what happened on set that day. Or, like, I remember recording this. Or, like, I remember we couldn't get this scene right. Stuff like that. And also, I used to feel like it was awkward to watch myself. Mm. Like, I don't know. I just felt weird about it. But, um, no, nah, he definitely taught me a lot of things. Like, it's crazy looking back on it. But... As I got older, I started watching like his comedy, Def Comedy Jam, yeah. and Kings of Comedy, and I was like, "Wow, yeah. that's crazy! He's funny." He's like, big time. Didn't even realize it. What's probably the best memory you have of him? Mm, best memory. Okay, I can think of. There's a lot. There's a lot. There's one that okay, just okay, rang so a one, bell. One, one that just popped in my yeah. head um, for lunch. Um, on Monday, I think it was like Mondays, he would get it catered in his dressing room. And my dressing room was right here. His was across from mine. Mm. And um, he would order a whole bunch of food. And he would order this chocolate cake that I loved. And he would just sit it in the middle. And he was like, if you finish eating all your food, I'll give you a slice of my cake. And I'd be like, okay, bet. And then we would all sit in the dressing room and watch Jerry Springer <laughs> and Maury yeah. with each other. So like, like cable TV type shit. No, that's all we could watch on the lot. Like yeah. on the lot, we could watch the other shows that were taping on the same set, or we could just watch like PBS Kids type shit. Yeah, <laughs> the, 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 yeah. the antenna TV. <laughs> yeah, and um, we would always watch Jerry Springer, yeah. and everybody would be just like yelling in his dressing room. That's crazy. That's great. So it sounds like he was a really personable dude to work with. No, definitely. Yeah. Because he seems like it, even on TV. Mm-hmm. And the show is basically about fatherhood and whatnot. So do you take any of those lessons from the show for, like, motherhood? Like, how he treats the kids? Like, <laughs> how he, you know, how he has to learn to police the kids? How he he gets that balance of talking to them? You know, they're shutting them out. Do you get any of those lessons from the show? I say a little bit. Mm-hmm. Like, my toughness. Yeah. But also, like... My sincere, uh, like me being sincere too, like he was a very sincere person. Mm. And even with like his joking, playing around, like he was still teacher us a lesson at the end of the day with the show. And so like I use it a little bit, not not too much, <laughs> yeah. but um, 
I definitely talk to my kids. I, 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 I would say he, he did give me that toughness, but like the way he talked to us in the show and like would break things down to under for us to understand. Mm. I, I have that same approach for like my son who's like, you know, bouncing off the walls, like for him to understand, like sitting down, like all right now, but like, yeah. you know, still have that. When you were younger and you were like on set, what's something that you really, really wanted to do that you probably couldn't do because you were an actress? Mm, what's something that I really, really wanted to do? Yeah. Like something you just longed for. Other than like, obviously like the social stuff. But I, mean, I was, but, <laughs> right. Like is, there had to be um, something that you just really, really wanted to do, like something specific. Mm, I would say do more regular things i think not even just like socially like i wasn't really out there like doing stuff i really wanted to play a sport i don't know why yeah that's i it. regret not playing a sport like so bad yeah i can't play sports playing or shit sport is, i is, cannot is, run yeah. good like i'm just trash at like yeah but a lot of people wouldn't know if they tried or you can mm -hmm. you know when you even if you suck at first you can learn how to get better at that sport and become better yeah, like Michael Jordan got cut from his high school team, and he's Michael Jordan. <laughs> <laughs> no, I wish I would have taken a sport or like. I really wanted to play the drums for some reason, or like I really wanted to do something outside of acting like that. Like but music. Yeah, yeah. I, I don't know why. I remember my my parents got me drumsticks. Would not get me drums, and I'm like, okay, what? Okay. <laughs> I used so, to play my heart out with them drumsticks, though. So then, what did you do for like recreation, realistically? Um, damn it, I'm trying to think. Was there a playground on set at least? There was like no, I had me I had my dressing room. There was no playground on this like lot. Mm. There was really nothing. Like my teacher would take me out and we would try to do like little stuff. Mm. But like I used to do like a lot of arts and crafts in my in my downtime of the show but not really like it really wasn't that much for a kid to do what about when you on these sets but when i got home like play with my dolls type shit not really like that's why i'm saying like i swear to god <laughs> i really didn't have a childhood <laughs> mm. didn't really used to do nothing that's tough yeah did you have to be on like some type of meat like meal plan as a kid actor you know what's crazy yeah. um i didn't mm. but my weight gain was a problem for them um really and i think that's kind of fucked up for like a six-year-old for you to be like hey this healthy kid is yeah like you big. know i mean i had baby fat like i was yeah. four i think i was four to nine when the show ended i was nine and like you know i was a chubbier kid i wasn't like Goddamn obese or nothing, no. but I was just I had baby fat. Yeah, <laughs> that's yeah. what they used to call it. I don't know. <laughs> so, no, um, but no, it Everybody's was a problem. Like a chunky at one point, and then they slim down at like puberty. Yeah, <laughs> like, I think that happens to a lot of people. Yeah, <laughs> it, I don't know, but it, it was a problem, and um, I was kind of on a we. I have to watch what I eat type of thing, and I do feel like that at such a young age. Of course, put some insecurities in me of like how I looked and like growing up, I felt very insecure because like if the producers you, you, not like, saying it, it's you're like, six years old yeah. telling me to watch my weight, sheesh, that's yeah. that's pretty tough. Or like you know, being told like, hey, you can't go up another size. Okay, I'm gonna try my best. <laughs> you, you know, it, um. It was difficult. Like, I felt like another reason that I wanted to get out of the industry is because they had a they had a look that I didn't have. Mm -hmm. And so I didn't feel like back then it was quite diverse. Mm -hmm. um, I didn't feel like they really liked my size or the way I looked. Like, when I would go out for other auditions, I literally, me and my sister used to hate going out for auditions that would be, like, all ethnicity. Never would get it. Yeah. Or like if it was African American, they're not picking my type of African American, you know. So like it just became more of a downer than making me happy. And there's also so much rejection in the industry. Like I could tell you how many auditions I've been <laughs> out on and did not get. And like you know, after a while, like you're a kid that hurts your self esteem and 
I would say there was a lot of downs in it, but like people don't really understand what kids go through in the industry. It's it's actually really tough on them. I came out pretty. I'm straight. Like yeah. I'm, I'm cool. <laughs> no, I, was just I know some motherfuckers who's not. Though. Yeah. <laughs> you know yeah. what I'm saying? Like a lot of people don't make it out all right. Mm. And so, because it's, it's, it's a lot on them as a kid. And when you grow up, you don't know how to do a lot of things or it's a lot. It sounds to me, though, that as a kid, you were, you were pretty smart if they were coming to you saying like, hey, don't go up another size. Because you obviously knew what it meant. And yeah. you obviously knew like, all right, you know, oh, got to watch my weight, whatever, whatever. Mm-hmm. But it sounds like you said, what, five through nine? So fourth or nine. Four through nine. Yeah, that's a Five really years. young age. So it sounds like you had a very developed brain that yeah. understood a lot. And that's really kudos to you because that's, a, like you said, you're straight. You're good. You know, you, you live in a great life. Um, but that's a lot of pressure. Yeah. Like a lot of pressure. Like I, you'd like when I'm thinking about when I was like nine. Or what were you doing at five? <laughs> bro, like, you know, like kindergarten. And I was like, the biggest pressure was like the spelling test. G. Like. Because I wanted to make sure I got 100%. And right. If I didn't get 100%, my mama was going to be like, we just went over this last night. Like, that was my biggest pressure. Yeah, like, my biggest pressure was making sure I knew my lines for the next yeah, day. Like, like my memory. Tough. Like, I'm on, like, like I got to remember these camera, scenes. Yeah. People watching you, uh, adults, watch, like, uh, not even just people, people watching you, adults directing you. Yeah. You know, telling you what to do. But you, and also, like, you have to, I grew up in the mindset of, you're being watched all the time. So, like, sometimes I would be on the set, like, tired. I'm a kid. I'm tired. Some scenes we had to keep redoing, and, like, I would be tired. But, like, I remember Bernie was like, sit up. And I'll sit up, and he was like, they're always watching. I was like, okay. And, like, I I took that, like, okay. He was like, even when you think they're not watching, they're watching you. Yeah. And I didn't understand, like, they, they could have replaced me yeah, yeah, yeah. or, like, things like that, you know? So, I really... It's a job at the end of the day. Mm-hmm. Yeah. The end of the it day, didn't feel like it most of the time because yeah. I was a kid. I'm just, like, chilling. Didn't realize I'm getting paid. None well, of that. Not everybody <laughs> thought about you that way either, like, mm-hmm. that you was a kid. They were just, we got to get this done, dates, times. You know, yeah, like, things. I will say this. Bernie fought for me a lot. Bernie fought for me a lot. Like, he would be like, no. Yeah. She's a kid. She's yeah. a t- she's tired. Yeah. Go ahead, take a break. Yeah. Stuff like that. Uh, like he I wouldn't go he for that. He wouldn't go for that. He seems like that type of guy, especially mm-hmm. being a Chicago guy. I know he did. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I just know he did. That's tough. But that's good though. Like you had people, especially someone of his caliber, like whose show it basically is to mm-hmm. you know, look out for you in those little ways, bro. Because it could have got tough for real. For no, real. for real. Like, they could have been on some bullshit. You know, not everybody in. <laughs> in his like the level where he was was like that or as nice as him or as caring as him like they didn't really give a shit but like he did Mm -hmm. and so like that's what really sets him apart to me Mm -hmm. because like he genuinely cared and he cared about everybody like everybody yeah never missed like a holiday birthday or anything like he was legit like an uncle to me like he was he was the best of them, I feel like. Yeah. Do you ever go, like, now? Mm-hmm. Do you ever go back and just look at a few episodes nowadays, like, or, like, look back? Like, do you ever, do you ever just, like, look back Not at Not really. No, no, I don't. Honestly, like, being honest, no, I don't. I don't know. I don't know. I feel like it gives me a weird feeling, like, damn, that's crazy. Like, it literally sometimes feels like that was, like, a past life. Like, it was so long ago. I'd be like, that's crazy that that even happened. Or like, it's 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 weird to me somehow. Mm. I don't know why, but I've always been like that. Like, I never used to watch the show because I used to be like, that's weird. Like, I don't like watching myself. I used to be a real shy person. So like, watching myself was like, I don't really know. I need I know what happens. I don't need to watch it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so. so what was, okay, so like high school then. Because mm-hmm. when you say you got like a big stampede of motherfuckers. All in your face. Right. I guess, what was class like then? Like, just for the rest of that year, like, what was class Class and shit like for you? Class was really... A lot of people don't know the struggles I actually went through high mm -hmm. school. So, like, I was in... I was being homeschooled, but I wasn't properly being homeschooled at the time. 
And I didn't have any credits going into my sophomore year in high school. So the whole time I was in high school, I was playing like catch up. Like I was summer school, taking mm. like six classes in summer school. Yeah, that's tough as fuck. That's, that's a, a lot. <laughs> You're not supposed to be taking yeah, that many bro, classes. So like I really grinded to graduate food. on time. But bro. like it was difficult for me. It was difficult for me because like I swear, like. Coming from being sheltered and homeschooled, like, and being thrown in your sophomore year, I remember, like, being in my algebra class, like, what the fuck is this? Like, mm -hmm. I've never seen this before. Like, it was it was very overwhelming, was I'll the, say. Was the education, like, on set compared to, like, high school a little bit watered down? Yeah, I feel like. I, I, I definitely feel like. And I will also say, like, even being on set, we were only getting a couple of hours of yeah. schooling we're not getting the full day of schooling i don't want to quote how many hours we were getting but yeah. like we weren't getting the full days hey, yeah, yeah. like impossible for, yeah As a kid you'd be burnt like, yeah we weren't getting a full possible. day's worth it was like i think we had a, like a certain amount of hours that had to be in school i really want to say four but i'm not sure but like i wasn't in like school for a full day i wasn't being taught everything and then when the show ended it was just kind of like self homeschooling and it just really wasn't it wasn't that great it wow. really wasn't that great and so when i got to high school and like that's really when the world kind of hit me and like life hit me and people hit me and friends and like Was fucking reality like photos and shit i mean yeah but like that's when i also realized like people are like some can not be shit like that's when i learned those hard life lessons because nobody prepared me for that stuff mm -hmm. but um yeah high school was fun though i'm so glad i went because i really evolved um i think high school also made me the person i am today shout out to my bae because that's also my high school sweetheart oh that's dope <laughs> Yeah, that's we went to fuck. prom together. And Honestly, dude, into, oh, that's yeah, so dope. like we went to prom and all our yeah. dances graduated together. Like our graduation pictures, I can look back and show my daughter. Like, look, yeah, like all of the mantle and shit. Right, like, look, yeah, yeah. <laughs> look that's at dope. us. <laughs> no, that's amazing. That's great. So then maybe going to school. Yeah, for no, that's why I said like gym. really worked out for me in the yeah. end. It that's really amazing. did. Man, D.D. Davis, <laughs> we really appreciate you coming through the session. Man, thank you for having it's me. It's an amazing time talking to you guys. Make sure you guys follow her. What's your Instagram, sweetie? Um, It's D.D. Davis, number one. You can follow me on TikTok, Twitter. It's all D.D. Davis. <laughs> yeah. Make sure y'all follow your boys, Session Podcast, man. We have Firebird Studios. Make sure y'all follow Firebird Studios, man. He gonna put it on there. He know what to do, man. <laughs> Shout out Frankie, man. DD Davis, the Session Podcast. We appreciate you. See, we help. <laughs>